Hello, you're listening to the broadcast from the New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We're located on Highway 411, just three buildings from the intersection of Highways 411 and 95. Our email address is simply our initials, followed by the word mailbox at gmail.com, which is nbwcmailbox at gmail.com. We meet Sundays for teaching at 10 a.m., followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. Brother Marcus Severance is a pastor. Now, let's listen in to the message. When we were singing this morning, we were, they were singing about the coming of the Lord. That was really the only time in this whole service that I felt the anointing. And the reason that you feel the anointing because that's how God will let you know what's on His heart, what's on His mind. I want you to stretch your hands this way. Ask God to anoint me. Thank you, Gabriel. And ask Him to help you to receive this morning. Maybe some of us need to wake up in this place this morning. Realize that God is speaking. And He's just about out of words to say. He's running out of patience. He's running, and we're running out of time. I believe this. Father, I want to thank You tonight, I mean this morning, God, and I want to praise You. God, we're living late in time. God, we, we, know, we know, we don't believe, we know that You're coming. God, we, we thank You, Lord, we can preach this message a hundred different ways, God, but I just ask, Father, today, that, Lord, You would minister, God, to Your people in this service this morning. God, that You would encourage people this morning, God, that You would open our hearts and our minds, God, to You. Father, I want to praise You and I want to glorify You. And God, most of all, I want to thank You this morning for Your Word, for Your promises that are yes and that are amen. Lord, I thank You for this congregation. I thank You, Lord, that we're here this morning. And God, we're here because You brought us here today. God, I ask You now to come into this service and I ask You, Father, to hover over this place. And God, that You would minister to Your people this morning. And God, I want to give you all the glory this morning, God, because, Lord, you've revealed these things, God. It's not by us, God. It's not through anything that anybody does, but, God, it's through you, and it's through you alone, God, that you reveal, and, God, that you speak so you can encourage your people, so you can show your people, so you can point us to the direction, God, in the direction, God, that you want us all to go this morning. Lord, we ask you to help us, God, in this next hour, next 45 minutes, God, and Lord, we ask You, Father, to bless Your church. And God, we ask You to minister to them this morning. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Let's raise our hands to the Lord this morning. Let's just praise Him for just a minute. Let's just praise Him for just a minute. Come on, let's just praise Him for just a minute. Just praise Him right where you are. Just praise Him right where you are and just thank Him because He's God and He's God alone. I just want to praise Him this morning for a minute. I just want to thank You this morning, God. Hallelujah. I just want to ask You, Father, to inhabit, God, our praises right now. Lord, I just want to ask You to come right now, Father. And we ask You, God, to lift the burdens off Your people, Lord. There's people in here, God, that have so much on their minds, God. Lord, there's people in here this morning, God, that are in pain. God, that need an answer. God, that that need You to answer them this morning, Father. God, we praise You, Lord. We glorify You, God. We ask You, Lord, to release Your people right now. Hallelujah. And God, we release that anointing now. We release Your presence in this service, God. And God, we give You all the glory for it. Come on. Praise Him and thank Him for His goodness this morning. Thank You for releasing. Thank You for anointing. Yes, Lord. Thank You for setting us free, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank You for Your promise. Every promise you fulfill, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord. Let Your presence come and flood this room, Lord God. This service, flood this service, Lord God. With Your blessings, Lord. Yes, God. Thank You, Jesus. Thank You, Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's, let's look in the Word this morning. I want to go to the book of John. The tenth chapter, beginning with verse 46. The book of John, the tenth chapter, John chapter 10, beginning with verse 46. I'm going to give you time to turn there this morning with me. John chapter 10. Don't you get no ideas, woman? 
John chapter 10, beginning with verse 46. Look up here when you have it. Look up at this preacher and say, Amen, I've got it. John chapter 10, beginning with verse 46. Amen. And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David. John chapter 10. Verse 46. Mark chapter 10. (laughs) Verse 46. I'll get it right here in a minute. Mark chapter 10. He wants you all to look in the Word this morning. Come on. He wants to keep you sharp. Amen. Amen. Mark chapter 10. That's right. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Amen. We're in Mark chapter 10. Let's read it again, beginning with verse 46. <laughs> Amen. Let's, let's read. And they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Rise. Look up here, everybody. Rise. He calleth for thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight. Let's read that again. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. I want to talk to you this morning, this message. The shout before the rout. Amen? The shout before the rout. When I look at this particular passage of Scripture, God in His mercy, and I want you to know today how very close that God is to you. I want you not to be aware of, of what's going on, anything else. You know, we, we, we'll be aware of everything else around us. But what I think the Lord wants me to instill in this church today is I want you to be aware and cognizant of the fact of really how close that Jesus is to you. Somebody say amen. amen. Had, had, had Bartimaeus uh, uh, listened to the crowd, and I, I want to I start here. If you and I uh, were, were in this situation today, and, and prophetically maybe some of you are in different areas of your life, but if we were like this man today, and we were blind, there's a lot of people in the world that are blind. There's, there's a shout that's going to go forth that people aren't aware of. But in this passage of Scripture, I, I want to go back and I want to minister on the fact of, of, of what happened to this, this particular person. This man, I don't know how long he'd been blind, I guess probably all of his life. He had been blind. He couldn't see. He couldn't see what you and I see. He couldn't wake up in the morning. He, he had to have somebody help lead him around. And, and the thing that, that, that I think about is, you know, that a lot of people are that way because Jesus said even though, you know, weeping may endure for a night, but in our life, in the morning time, because of His mercy, joy, come on, is going to come to you and I. You know, you know, Bill. He, it's funny that I was thinking about the bird 
that he killed this morning and it was a turtle dove and I think about you know a, a symbolic when Jesus was being baptized in the river Jordan and, and listen to me and, and he was there and he came up out of the water and said and a dove the Holy Spirit as a dove descended upon Jesus well in this particular passage of scripture that's the way that I feel about blind Bartimaeus I felt that way one time before I met Christ maybe you did I didn't have any power I was powerless I was a beggar sitting on the side of that road, Jesse. I was alone without God. I didn't have a friend in the world. And you know, and the best that the world had to offer me, I'd partook of it. And I don't know about you, but I was left empty. I was in a dusty road like, brother, uh, like, like, like Paul was. You know, Paul was going down the wrong road. And blind Bartimaeus was sitting on the side of a road, but he was on the wrong road. In the world today... There's going to be a shout before the rout. The world today on, on every corner in every nation, not just in America. Everybody talks about how bad America is. Let me tell you what. America is still the greatest nation on the face of this earth. But every nation in the world is in this place right now. They're sitting on the side of the road and they're wondering what's going to happen next. But I can tell you from the Word of God what's getting ready to happen there's getting ready to be a shout. Amen. God's getting ready to shout. But in this particular passage of Scripture, what would have happened to blind Bartimaeus had he not begun to shout and cry out to God? A lot of people, listen, this is actually in my text, believe it or not. A lot of people in life, the reason that they never have anything good happen to them is because even, even though this man was on the side of the road and he was blind, even though he was on the side of the road and he was sitting there, nasty, probably dirty, on a dusty road, it was probably hot that day. When Jesus was coming through, it was probably in the springtime. It might have been in the summertime. He didn't have anybody that was out there giving him water. He didn't have anybody out there. He was just out there blind on his own looking for somebody to help him. I tell you today, I'm glad that I found somebody to help me. I'm glad that I've got somebody that, that knows all about me. And when I'm, like Gillis said this morning, that hey, I needed that Savior. I used to say all the time, hello, hello. That's why that we need a Savior. But what would have happened, and this is my text, if blind Bartimaeus would have just sat there and would have never opened his mouth. If he would have just sat there that day on the side of the road, you know, and he's got his cloak on. He's got his beggar uh, 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 pan out. And he's out there, you know, just like the Scripture said. He's out there begging. The world's out there begging. And I pray God today that we've got something to offer those people that are out there begging on the side of the road. Somebody say amen. I feel the Holy Ghost. But he could have just sat there. And the first thing that I want to show you, he could have just sat there that day and done nothing. He could have just sat there and, 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 just, and, and, and Jesus would have walked right by him. It didn't matter that Jesus was coming down that road, but what matter, and what matters in my life and in your life is that we do something about it when He's coming down that road. You know that there are things that we need in our life that will draw Christ to us. It will draw Jesus to us. Like a little baby. Like this little baby right here. If this little baby gets to crying and, and gets to going on with something... Well, they're either going to do they're going to do something for her to, to make her quit crying. Well, that's what happened in Bartimaeus' life the same way. You know, God didn't walk up to him and give him a pacifier. God didn't walk up to him and give him a bottle. But God walked up to him and asked him a question. He said, okay, I'm here now. Now, let me ask you something. What do you want God to do for you? What do you want this morning from God? What do, I mean, what do you want in your life? Listen to me, church. What do you want God to do for you this morning in your life? You know, we come to church, you'll hear the preaching, you'll hear a man of God, a woman of God will listen to the singing, but what do you, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost, what do you want God to do in your life? And do you have the faith like this man? Do we have the faith to believe that when we ask God to move in our life, that God is going to move in our life? I tell you right now, I'm glad that I met a God that has power. But God, that's not enough that I met Him. It's not enough that I even know Him. But I've got to have the faith to believe Him. That what I ask Him that He's going to do. 
One of the reasons that I named this message the shout before a route because I saw something very interesting the other day. It's like the Lord's